Hello, welcome back to another lesson on learnwagtail.com. In this video, we're going to be learning about the Wagtail site settings. Now, if you come from a Django background, you will understand that there is this thing called a global context, and you can add anything to your global context using a context processor. But if you want to be able to give the user more control, you may want to have a model built off of that and then have some sort of admin interface where the user can go and change that information. Luckily for us, Wagtail has this built in. Now a good example of this is anytime you're on a website and you scroll down to the footer, you see social media settings in that footer. So you've got like a Facebook link, a Twitter link, a YouTube link, Instagram, something like that. That is where this comes in. And that's exactly what we're going to build today. So what I'm going to do here is just go over to my website pip and shell, and I'm just going to run my server. Now it says that port is already in use, that's because I have another project using port 8000. Through the power of editing, I have just went and shut that down, so this will now work. Cool beans, so let's open up a browser and open up our website. I'm just using Firefox, you can use any browser that you like. Go to localhost 8000, our site will show up. And if we scroll to the bottom, we don't really have a footer. Actually, we don't have a footer. So ideally, in our settings here, we're going to have another option that says social media settings or something along those lines. So let's go ahead and get started with that right now. So in your terminal, what you're going to want to do is create a brand new app. So python3 manage.py start app. And we're going to call this one site settings, just something real basic, site underscore settings, site settings, social media settings, whatever you want to call it. This name will be used inside of our template. So whatever it is, make sure it is memorable and make sure that it sort of matches the way that your template variables are used or written. Okay, and then I'm going to run server again, and nothing's going to change at this point, but we do need to open up our base.py, and we need to add this in here because we now have a folder inside of our apps, where are you, called site settings. So let's copy and paste, and then change it to site settings. Now inside of our site settings, it's going to give us a bunch of different files. We don't need these. So for instance, views, tests, and admin, we don't need. So I'm just gonna get rid of them right now. And again, through the power of editing, I have just magically gotten rid of those. So let's open up our models.py, and this is where we're going to be putting our site setting. Now our site setting is a lot like a wagtail page, in the sense that it has a couple Django fields, and it also has some panels to display those fields. We don't inherit page, we inherit base setting instead though. And then we wrap the whole thing with a decorator, and basically it just works. It's a little bit magic, and it is fantastic. So let's just dive into this the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to create our class. So this class is going to be used, this name is going to be used inside of our template. So whatever you use here, make sure you're probably not going to change that later because that's going to not work on your templates anymore. So in this case, I'm just going to call it social media settings. And it's going to inherit a base setting. Now we have not imported that yet. So don't worry. And let's give it a doc string of social media settings for our custom website. A little doc string so other developers know what's going on. And now we want two in here. Or maybe let's do three. So we've got Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Now these are all actually going to be pretty much the exact same. So I just hit option and clicked in three different places so I can type all at the same time. And I'm going to type models.charfield blank can be true because these are optional. Let's also say null can be true so that in the database it can be saved as null. And then we can have some help text in here. Help text. And in fact, I did something incorrect there. Uh, because these are actually going to be URLs, this should be URL field. And then we can customize each help text. So this one can be like the Facebook URL. Twitter URL, you could change this one back to a, a char field if you wanted to and use a Twitter handle instead. Sometimes that one's a little bit easier to do. And let's put YouTube channel URL. 
and I forgot. A key component is that equal sign. And essentially, essentially, that's all there is to creating a Django model. However, because this is a Wagtail site, we need to throw things into panels. And panels are how things are displayed in Wagtail. So let's add a panel. Let's add a multi-field panel. Now that you are somewhat familiar with those from a prior lesson, let's give it a heading. Social media settings. And in here, it's going to take a field panel. It's actually going to take three of them. And it's going to take Facebook. And that matches our Facebook variable, or Facebook property rather, on line eight. And this one is Twitter. That matches Twitter on line nine. And YouTube, which matches the property on line 10. Now, if we save this, VS Code is going to complain that there is no multi-field panel, there's no field panel, and there is no base setting. So let's go and import these. So to get our field panel and our multi-field panel is from wagtail.admin.edit handlers. There we go. Import field panel and also import our multi-field panel. And then to get our base setting, and then we need our decorator after that, we need to from wagtail.contrib dot setting dot models import base setting and let's also import register setting so register setting this is this is our decorator and all we do to register a setting is put at register setting above our base setting model and that is it so now i hit save i'm going to open up my terminal and you could see that it was erroring because we didn't have our imports working, or rather the imports actually just weren't added. But now everything is A-OK. -okay. So I am going to open up our site and give this a refresh. And this gives us an error saying no reverse match at admin, Wagtail settings is not a registered namespace. So we know that our server is running but we know that the front end is not running. So let's always try to make migrations first. Let's see what happens when I type python3 manage.py make migrations. It created a new model, make that slightly larger for you. And then python3 manage.py migrate. Okay, it created a migration called site settings.0001 underscore initial. python3 manage.py run server. And we will go and open up our browser again and refresh. Now, as you can see, we're getting this error called Wagtail Settings is not a registered namespace. Now, what does that even mean? Well, at the beginning of this lesson, I had said that basically this is a global context processor. And well, that's exactly what this is doing. We need to add that global context processor from Wagtail. We also need to install the Wagtail Settings app and there is a reason for that, but uh, I'm gonna go and install that first. I'm gonna show you how to do that. And then I'll explain a little bit about what's going on with that app. So when I open up VS Code, I'm gonna go back to base.py and I'm gonna find where is templates here. Under context processors, we have, well, we have to put a wagtail one in here. So we do wagtail.contrib.settings.contextprocessors.settings. Now, if you're thinking, geez, Caleb, that is a lot to remember. You know what? You're not wrong. Luckily, the Wagtail docs cover this. We're going to save that. And then we're going to go down to our installed, or rather go up into our installed apps. And we need to add one more in here called wagtail.contrib, not contribute, just contrib.settings. And save that. So... When we added that global context processor, that's basically saying, hey, Wagtail, get all of our site settings and, and throw it into the global context so that we can access it on every single page. So now it's a context processor that's built into the CMS for us. The only thing we need to do is enable it. And that's because Wagtail is built largely for performance and because adding things to your global context or your context processors can get very, very expensive because it runs on every single page that can be a problem. So by default, Wagtail does not come with this installed. However, the option to install it is there and we don't need to install anything else. We just need to basically enable it. 
So let's go back to Firefox and give us a refresh. And here we'll see our social media settings. Now at this point, you may or may not see an SQL error, basically saying that this table doesn't exist or that this column doesn't exist or some sort of SQL error on your page. Or when you click into social media settings, you might actually see that. Regardless, if you see it, all you have to do is run migrations. I'm just coming back to my settings, going to social media settings, and here we have Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So Facebook, I'm just going to type in HTTPS, Facebook.com. That's it. And in here, because I don't know any URLs off the top of my head, uh, for Twitter, I'm just going to do Twitter.com slash Caleb Tallinn, and YouTube, I'm going to leave blank. I'm going to save this, and aha, things look okay or at least on the back end. Now, if we load up our site, we're actually going to see that there is nothing there. So what I'm gonna do, because this is going to be hard to see on a video, especially a YouTube video, is I'm going to throw the site settings up in the banner here, or maybe somewhere in the middle-ish where you can actually see it. And then after I'm done recording this video, I'm going to put it into a footer. And it's all going to live inside of either base.html or home.html. I'm going to be working on home.html so I can throw it in here, but I'm going to pull it out and put it into base.html as a footer later. So if you're looking at the code and you're looking at the video and you're saying, well, this doesn't line up, that is exactly why. I just wanted to give you a heads up there uh, just because at the very bottom of the page, right at the bottom left or bottom center or bottom right, that's gonna be very hard for you to see due to the nature of how screen recording works. Okay, so I'm going to open up homepage.html just above our stream fields. We're going to put site settings and this will say site settings right there. And now we just, we need to make sure that the Facebook one exists, the Twitter one exists and the YouTube one exists. That is it. So what I can do in here just to demonstrate that this does actually exist is we now have access to this thing called settings. This comes from our global context processor. And that's why we had to enable it is because we now have access to a variable in all of our templates called settings. Settings, site settings, that's our app name. And then social media settings, that is our model name. And then our field name, Facebook. When I refresh this, we're gonna see, oh, there it is, facebook.com. We can do the same thing with Twitter, and we can do the same thing with YouTube. Now the YouTube one's not gonna show up because we left that empty, says none. Now this is nice and all, but we don't really just want to display these links. These links are kinda eh, no one wants to see that. So let's actually add Font Awesome to our project. Type in Font Awesome, let's go and get started. Let's get it started. And I'm just gonna grab all that copy it, and in my base.html, in my head, I am going to add font awesome. All I did was copy and paste that. So now I go back into the home page, and now we can actually start using some icons. But before we do that, let's check to see if this actually exists so that we don't show just none. So let's do if there is a Facebook setting. And let's go back to Font Awesome and let's look up a Facebook icon. Facebook icon. I'm just gonna copy that and throw that in there. And at the moment, I'm ju just praying that that actually works. The icon will most likely work, but if it doesn't, we'll fix it then. So I'm gonna Replace that with Twitter and replace this one with YouTube. And it's not Twitter F and YouTube F, it's probably just Twitter and YouTube. And now let's refresh our page and let's see what is happening. Oh, hello, Facebook icon and a Twitter icon. Let's make that larger so you can see what's going on here. Site settings, Facebook and Twitter, but YouTube didn't show up because we didn't give it a YouTube URL. Lastly, we just need to make this a link. So let's do a href is equal to settings.site underscore settings 
dot social media settings dot change me. You'll see why I'm doing that in just a moment. Let's go get rid of those. Let's go down a line. Let's outdent. Let's go down a line and let's close off our tags. By the way, the power of editing on multiple lines is really, really useful sometimes. So I put change me in here because that's not right because we want Facebook here. We want Twitter here and we want YouTube here. So that's just adding URLs. That's all it is. Now, when I refresh the page, these are going to turn into links. As you can see, the color of them has changed. And now if I click this one, it's going to open up Facebook. And if I open up this one, it's going to open up my Twitter. Cool. That's all there is to site settings. Nice and easy, really. Again, as mentioned, all I'm going to do after this video is I'm going to throw this into the footer of the site just because at the bottom of YouTube videos, there's the, the play bar and stuff. And if you pause it, you might not actually be able to see what I'm talking about. So I'm going to go ahead and do that shortly. But as a summary, in this video, we've added site settings, we've added a, a global context processor from Wagtail, and we've enabled Wagtail's contrib settings. And then lastly, we added font awesome to our project. Hey there, my name is Caleb Tallinn. I'm the author behind this video. If you like this video, don't forget you can subscribe, you can share, you can like, you can comment. Any one of those is really, really helpful. And for more tutorials, you can always look up learnwagtail.com. And if what I covered was not quite thorough enough for you, you could always head on over to docs.wagtail.io to explore their full documentation. And their docs are absolutely fantastic, by the way.